Hi everyone and welcome to this tutorial on how, how to calculate internal member forces using the method of sections. So today we've got a fairly simple example, example although poorly drawn. Um, we have two supports here, we have a pin support and a roller support as well as a 10 kN force um, in the mid-span and a 15 kN force here on the right side. Um, each of the bays are spanned by 5 meters and the height of the truss is also 5 meters. So when we're looking at the method of sections, there's usually two steps. The first step is to calculate the support reactions, so the reactions here and here. And then the second step is to take a cut somewhere along the, the truss to then calculate the internal forces of those members. So in this example, we're going to try and solve for these three members. So we're going to make our cut along there, which we'll see in the second step. So step first, let's calculate the reaction forces here. Um, at RA, which is reaction A, and reaction B, which is the, uh, the roller support there. Um, so we have more information when we go to solve and take a cut here at the method of sections. So, I hope you can see that. Okay, I'll just lean that a little bit closer. Now, um, as with like beam, anal sorry, beam analysis as well, the first, um, the way we're going to solve for these values here is just by taking um, the equilibrium reaction, sorry, the equilibrium um, equations, the sum of moment at this point, or sum of forces at this uh, in the whole structure, and making them equal to zero. So, yeah, very similar to when we're calculating the reactions of a beam. We're going to start with just summing the forces um, in certain directions. And the first one we're going to do is a sum of the moments at point A, which is going to be this reaction force. We'll make this B. So the sum of moment at point A is equal to zero. So to do this, I'm going to stick to the same convention, um, direction convention as uh, throughout the whole um, hand calculation. So I'm going to start by um, taking this negative 10 kilonewton force. So we've got a negative 10 kilonewton. Um, and the, that force is 5, 10, 15 meters in the positive direction. So we're 15 meters going in the positive direction. So I'm going to stick to this convention. Uh, similarly, I have a 15 kilonewton force, which is a negative 15 kilonewton force here. And this one is 5, 10, 15, 20, 25 meters away from um, our point A. Now, the same, same way we've gone negative here, I know I can probably assume that this is going to be a positive reaction force because it is supporting the structure. So I'm going to assume this, this RB to be positive. So I'll do plus RB, which is our unknown in this equation, times by 30 meters, which is the distance between the reactions. And that whole equation is going to equal to zero. So that's 150 minus 375 plus 30RB equals 0. So if I just solve for RB, I get RB is equal to 17.5 kilonewtons. Uh, and if I solve it, I've moved my negatives to this side, so it's going to be a positive 17.5. And I just like to denote um, the upwards direction just to clarify that as well. So, And that makes sense. I assumed that it was going to be a positive here it is a positive, which means it's an up force there. So it is a supporting force resisting these two um, negative forces here. So that makes sense. Um, so all my um, directions kind of balance out. So I've got my force, uh, the reaction here at B, 17.5 kilonewtons. Um, you probably guessed that now we can take the sum of forces in the Y direction to equal zero. And what this is basically saying is that if I have all these down, all these down force, I need to have the equivalent positive force in at these two reaction points in order for this structure to be static, to be still. So um, the sum of the forces in the y direction should sum to zero. So I have my reaction at A, which is this, which is the unknown, and again I'm going to assume positive, minus 10 kilonewtons, minus 15 kilonewtons, which is this force, and then plus that resisting force, or that supporting force of 17.5 and that's going to equal zero. So by um, solving for RA, I get 7.5 kilonewtons. Don't forget the unit system. Uh, you always lose points for uh, leaving out the unit system. And again, that's positive. I assumed a positive force here. Um, so I'm going to put upwards direction just to 
clarify that as well. Uh, but that checks out, it makes sense. I've got a 7.5 kilonewton force here, 17.5 kilonewton force here. If I um, sum that and minus these two forces, I get zero. Okay, so now that we have um, our support reactions, um, so I've got RA and RB, which we calculated in a previous step. I'm now going to take a cut somewhere along the truss um, in order to calculate the internal forces of the members that we're cutting through. So in this example, I'm going to take the cut right here. Um, and I could take a cut anywhere, but I'm just for, for this example's sake, I'm just going to take a cut here. Usually I have, you know, calculate the forces in, you know, this member, this member, and this member. So in this example, um, yeah, we're going to take the cut there. So I can see I've already drawn, um, you know, up to that point. So I'm just going to insert now all my forces that I have calculated. So I have the RA force of 7.5 in the upwards direction. I've also got this down force of 10 kilonewton, which was the original load. Uh, and they're all my known forces in the system. So they're the ones that we already have calculated and we know... Um, are applied to this structure and then what else we're going to do is also draw in the other members that we're trying to solve for so we have an F13 I'm just uh, naming these whatever you like but uh, F10 and an F11 so this would be member 13 member 10 member 11 and they are um, have some internal force, so some compression or some tension forces here that are also being applied to the structure. So just imagine we have a structure here. These all still need to satisfy um, the equations of equilibrium in order for them to be static. So that's essentially what we're doing. We're going to use the same system of, you know, summing forces uh, to zero um, while looking at the different forces that we have in this system. So the first one we're going to look at is the sum of forces in the Y. Now that needs to equal zero. So sum of forces Y equal zero. Um, and we're just going to look at what forces we have available to us. We have a 7.5 kilonewton, positive 7.5. And we have a negative 10. Now we also know um, that, so there's no force in the Y in F13. There's no force in the Y and F11, but there is some downforce here in member F10. So we're going to take that part of the component, that component of the force in that member, and include that in this equation. Now again, I'm using, I've just assumed some directions, but this will be important um, as we're solving. But I'm just assuming here that this is actually a negative force. So I'm just going to be careful in my unit system here, and I'm going to do negative uh, F10 multiplied by sin 45 degrees um, and this is the component of the force that is in the Y um, and the reason I know this is 45 degrees is because uh, the height of the structure is 5 meters and the width of one of these bays is also 5 meters so I know this is a nice easy 45 degree angle uh, which makes my calculations really easy and I'm going to sum those to being zero so Again, solving that equation, I'll end up with something like F10 sin 45 degrees equals 2.5. Therefore, F10 is equal to 3.536 kilonewtons. Now, the important thing too is that this is a positive force. So I can see that this is in the direction that I've previously assumed, and that's pushing in. So you can see that's pushing into the member. So imagine you've, you've got quite a lot of force into it itself, um, therefore that member is in compression. That's a nice easy way that I like to think of and it's also important just to denote which direction that is to make make sure it's clear um, to whoever's marking your grade that that is in compression um, and we've followed this, the same um, kind of procedure each time to, in order to, to calculate that direction of the force. So now we've solved one member, so we know the internal force of that member. Let's try to solve these other two here, F13 and F11. Now, we could take the sum of moments, sorry, the sum of forces in the, in the uh, X direction, but we have two unknowns here. So we don't know F13, we don't know F11, the only one we know really is F10, the component force. So we don't really have enough uh, information to solve that. 
So why don't we start with summer force, so, sorry, summer moment at this point. The reason we're going to do that is because this 10 kilonewton doesn't contribute any force, any moment to this point. This F13 doesn't, this F10 doesn't. So we can cancel all those out and we can just focus on the force here at F11, the internal force here, and the reaction force is 7.5. So by taking the moment at this point, um, and an easy way to think of it is, well, that's where most of the members are going through, most of the unknowns are going through, it's going to cancel out these unknowns and leave us with two, so one, one piece of information and one unknown, which we can then solve for. So we'll take the sum of moments about point, we'll call that point 0.7, just for an arbitrary number, equals zero. So we have some information, we have um, a positive 7.5 kilonewton force. Now we're going backwards 15 meters, so 5, 10, 15. So remember we're going to keep the unit system, sorry, the direction system the same. This is important to make sure we're applying the force in the right direction. Uh, and then we also have this F11 force, which is an unknown, and that's 5 meters away from this point of moment. Um, so we're going to do uh, plus 5 F11. Um, and another sanity check is that the moment force here, which is sort of going in this direction, um, is opposite to the one going in this direction. So we can tell, we can see that the directions are different and that is correct. So we're applying them in the same direction. Otherwise, if you put this in the wrong direction, you'll get an incorrect value for F11. So a good sanity check is just to make sure, okay, this, this force is contributing a moment in this direction, this force is contributing a moment in this direction, so they should be opposite, um, and that makes sense. I'm gonna make that equal to zero. So solving that equation, we end up with F11 equals negative 22.5 kilonewtons. And now looking at the direction here, so we've got We've assumed positive here. It's come out negative, so we know that this is actually force is 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 um, is applied in the opposite direction. And again, we're going to really think about um, the direction of the forces here. And obviously, we had a compression one, which is pulling in. Now we have a tension force pushing out. So we're going to write as tension there. So now we've solved two of these members. Obviously now we have to figure out, sorry, we've solved these two members. We have to solve F13. Now the, we've used Fy equals zero. So sum of forces in Y, sum of moments around 0.7 is zero. So now let's try the sum of forces in the X direction of this system are equal to zero. Um, looking here, we have F11, which is, we've calculated. We have um, the component of F10, which is in the X direction. Um, we have F13, which is the unknown. So we're gonna really just contribute, they're, they're all gonna be the member forces here. There's no um, vertical force here, so horizontal force here. There's no horizontal force component here. So it's really just gonna be F13, let's start writing it. F13 plus F11. Um, sorry, F13, F11 is actually in the opposite direction, so I'm going to minus that because F13, F11 is in that direction. I mean, it actually works out to be the same. F13 plus F11, since F11 is negative, it's going to be work, work out to be the same. So I won't confuse us. I'll just do F13 plus F11 uh, plus the the uh, horizontal component of F10, oops, sorry about that, F10 cos 45, so now we're doing the, um, the horizontal component, is equal to zero, so we end up with F13, this is where the negative comes in, minus 22.5, plus 3.536, which is the F10 force, um, 0, 07, which is the um, cos 45 value, is equal to zero. So solving this, we have F13 is equal to positive 20 kilonewtons. 
Uh, and again, we assumed a positive direction there. So that's in that direction, in that direction. So it's going to be a compression force. So there you have it. That's how you can calculate the internal members, sorry, the internal forces of these members by taking a cut and then applying the equilibrium um, equations. So I hope that's been helpful. Feel free to leave any comments in the, uh, in the comments below and I hope to see you on the platform soon. Thank you. Hi everyone, so as a bit of a bonus, we can take you through how you can generate these hand calculations uh, for the method of sections using the software. So today I'm just using um, SkySiv Truss, which uh, once you log in, um, you can visit this uh, URL or just visit it from your dashboard. I've built my truss, which is the identical truss that we just solved by hand. Uh, applied my, my loads, my supports, and now I'm just going to run solve. And clicking hand, sorry, truss hand calcs, and I can choose between the method of joints or the method of sections. Obviously, we just did that, so let's do the method of sections. And I can move my cut anywhere along here, so um, it's dynamic. I can change where I'm taking the cuts to calculate the the internal uh, forces of these members by there. Let's do the same as what we just did by the hand calculation, which is along here. Uh, and we now have the same um, forces or the same, sorry, uh, equilibrium uh, equations. So we've got sum of force in the X, sum of force at the moment uh, at a pinpoint. Uh, and it is now doing this, the calculations for me. So I can see uh, the reaction at the pin is 7.5 kip. Uh, so this this one is just built in kip rather than kilonewtons, uh, and the reaction forces force in the other um, reaction was seventeen point five. So um, they've matched the reaction forces that we calculated by hand, and now we also have the cut here. So um, the same way that we cut uh, along those members and then calculated F eleven, F ten. Uh, in this case, we got F four four dash five. Um, so we now have the same forces. Um, here which match our results of 3.536 which is this one uh, 22 kilonewtons so 22.5 kilonewtons and the result of negative 20 kilonewton kip in the opposite direction there so I'm able to, to validate my hand calculation um, using the software I can also check here if I just go axial you can review the internal forces here and I can see I have uh, the 20 kilonewton force which was in compression that looks correct 3.536 in compression, that's also correct, and then 22.5 kilonewtons um, in the opposite direction, which was in tension. So I can uh, confirm that the hand calculations we did previously are correct uh, using the software. Um, and yeah, I can obviously test a lot of other different trusses very easily.